remember, powers that are negative represent moving that base to the denominator of a fraction. Now, because this is x to the minus 2 doesn't mean that this x gets moved to the bottom of this whole fraction. You still need to keep uh, the numerator and denominator separate. So when we rewrite this as a complex fraction, the base x squared gets moved to the denominator in that fashion. Now in the denominator, 3 plus 1 over the base x gets moved to the denominator in that fashion. And by doing it this way, what you can then do is look at each of these as individual fractions. And you can either use method 1 or 2. Method 2 is probably quicker, but method 1 is more consistent. The students probably prefer that. If you look at just the numerator, two terms, the LCD is x squared. So if you take the first fraction's numerator times the missing LCD factor, which is x squared, minus the next fraction's numerator 1 times its missing LCD factor, nothing. So here's your numerator. In the denominator, we write the same thing. Write this as one single fraction. The LCD is x. We take the first fraction's numerator times the missing LCD factor, x plus the next fraction's numerator times its missing LCD factor, it's not missing anything. So now it just becomes a problem where you factor everything here in the numerator. So this is the difference of two squares, so it factors into the sum and difference of the bases being squared. So plus one and minus one over x squared. In the denominator, there's no additional factors, so you just leave it as it is. And so in this particular case, once you have your fraction written, we're going to take our numerator, 3x plus 1 times 3x minus 1 all over x squared. And we're going to invert and multiply by our denominator. So the x gets moved from the denominator to the numerator. 3x plus 1 gets moved to the denominator. And then it's just a matter of canceling common factors. So the x's cancel, the 3x plus 1's cancel, and we're left with our answer in this form. Because we had, uh, we did invert and multiply, we have to consider all of these potential factors as being domain restrictions. So x can't be 0, x can't be equal to minus 1 third, and x can't be equal to 0. 0 is shown, so we don't even need to bother uh, with including those restrictions, but x has to be restricted from being negative 1 third. And so this would be your answer. Okay. Now, let me talk about the other ways that you can do that. Let's go ahead and do. Uh, you're welcome. Bless you. All right, so another way that you can do it is from this step right here. If you recognize that 9 is a perfect squared and 1 over x squared is also a perfect square, you might be able to recognize that this fits the pattern of a squared minus b squared. So the value being squared to give you 9 is 3. The value being squared to give you 1 over x squared is 1 over x. So the difference of two squares can be factored into the sum and difference of those bases being squared. And then notice that the denominator is what it is, 3 plus 1 over x. And right from here, if you see that, these entire binomial factors wind up canceling. And you're left with your answer 3 minus 1 over x which if you combine into a single fraction has an LCD of x. We take our first fraction's numerator 3 over the LCD factor missing x minus the next fraction's numerator 1 over or times any LCD factor missing from its denominator, nothing. And so this would be your answer. You would still though need to go back in and uh, be able to identify uh, any of the domain restrictions. So you'd have to uh, take this expression right here, 3 plus 1 over x set it equal to 0 and solve. So you would get uh, subtract 3 from both sides. Um, if you inverted, so again you could uh, take and multiply both sides by x and then divide by negative 3, you get x is not equal to negative 1 third. So you would be able to find that other restriction, but it's much more difficult to find the restriction there if you're trying it that way.